to another work week in my life or welcome if you are new i'm a lifestyle youtuber here on youtube and i also have a podcast called in bloom podcast I share a lot of my life working a nine to five but also planning a wedding and managing being a content creator but i figured i'd do another work week in my life this week because i am going in office today and i haven't been in office since early may i want to say so it's been a little over a month i'm getting my overnight oats situated i think i'm gonna stop and get a coffee just because it's monday and I just need to pick me up because going in office on Mondays, it's the worst. I did not sleep last night very much, so I'm very tired because I went to bed late. I had to stay up editing a video for submission to a brand, which I'm actually about to submit right now. I'm really happy I got it done. Went to bed late, woke up early because I needed to wash my hair because we were at Griffin's uncle's house yesterday. So we were swimming and everything, so my hair was all gross from the pool. And I showered last night, but I didn't wash my hair, so I had to wash my hair this morning. And it got really frizzy because I went outside with it kind of damp. So then after I finished editing my video, I still wanted to read. I'm reading Same Time Next Summer by the same author that wrote Nora Goes Off Script, which I haven't read Nora Goes Off Script yet, but and I finished Yours Truly on Saturday because we went to the beach with my brother and sister-in-law and we stayed the night with them Friday night. So we had some good time with them and I'm like super somber right now. But So I've been doing lots of reading, but I'm my own worst enemy and stayed up later than I probably should have reading. And then our smoke detector was going off like every five minutes after like 1.30 a.m. So it was super annoying, but Griffin finally got the batteries replaced this morning when he woke up. So at least that part is taken care of and we will have to deal with it again. But we were just tossing and turning all night because of that. I've gotten so, so many questions lately asking how I've been styling my natural curly hair. Do you all want to see how I style my hair like this with my natural hair, super defined curls, low frizz, and lots of volume, then definitely stay tuned. And I want to thank Beach Weaver for sponsoring today's video because they sent me the blow brush not too long ago and you all this is such an incredible hair tool because it really allows you to style your hair in so many different ways with one tool this is how i have my hair styled at the beginning of this video when i'm going in office it's how i did my hair before i went into the office which y'all know that it was fast for me because if i'm waking up early to go in the office i'm usually leaving my house at like 7 30 to wake up wash my hair do all the things before i went into office that tells you how simple and quick styling with the blow brushes. It comes in this big case. Inside you have the blow brush and four different attachments that can go on the blow brush for styling your hair. This oval nozzle that evenly diffuses air for pre-styling. Brown brush is perfect for those smooth and shiny blowouts. And then the smoothing brush is really great to straighten while drying, smooth frizz, and tame flyaways. And then I'm showing you all the diffuser attachment today and how I use it on the blow brush, which the diffuser attachment is great for those of us with naturally curly hair. There are three heat and two speed settings on the blow brush which you can adjust through this control ring on the bottom that just twists i love that there's a 360 degree swivel cord to really make getting all around your head super easy it comes in pink or black and they are both beautiful i obviously have the black hair and love it and i'm in the shower i will have a conditioner or hair mask in my hair and i basically just rinse it out while i'm upside down and comb with any wide tooth comb through my hair while I'm upside down. And then I take the Beach Waver Me and My Curls Creamy Curl Mousse, which this product smells so unreal. And I love this mousse so much because it doesn't weigh my curls down. I have to be really careful with mousses because they either make my hair crunchy or they weigh my curls down a lot where they aren't as defined. This gives my hair so much volume, especially at the root. Put a good amount of this in my hair because I have a lot of hair and my hair is pretty long right now. I don't rake my fingers through my hair because that separates the curls. I just sort of use praying hands to put it over the sections of hair like this. I will just go straight into scrunching, which when it comes to scrunching, I just use a microfiber towel. And while I'm still upside down in the shower, I will scrunch my hair with that microfiber towel and then wrap my hair in it and I leave this wrap on for about an hour usually depends on how much time I have before I need to diffuse my hair and after I've taken my hair out of the microfiber towel and before I start diffusing I like to add the keep it calm smoothing cream from Beach Waver as well this is an alpha bond multiplier so it really helps with smoothing flyaways and adding shine and I really just feel like it makes my curls so much more shiny and less dull and I just do a small about dime size amount of this and I really just focus on the lower half and ends of my hair and that's the only time I touch my hair 
when I take it out of the towel. Then I use a blow brush from Beach Waver and I just add on the diffuser attachment like so and it clicks in. And the biggest tip I have is to touch your hair as little as possible while it's drying. The more you touch it, the more frizz it creates. And then I will go in with the diffuser and I personally like to use the cool setting just because I find that it helps the most with frizz control. I like to start at the roots, so going kind of above my head and by my ears and then at the base of my neck to diffuse my hair in those areas and just kind of like to sit for a couple seconds in each spot and just kind of rotate throughout until I feel like my hair is about 80 to 90 percent dry. It really does not take very long at all and that is how I have been styling my hair. The blow brush is so incredible especially if you're someone who styles your hair a lot of different ways like myself. I mean can we just take a second for how defined these curls are? If you all want to make styling your hair super easy, super aesthetically pleasing, super quick while achieving great results. Definitely check out the blow brush from Beach Waver down below in the link in my description box. Thank you so much to Beach Waver for sponsoring today's portion of the video. This was filmed in the future, but it is exactly how I did my hair this morning that I went in office. Here is my outfit. I'm wearing this cotton on a little sweater tank. This belt's Princess Polly. These are the archer pants from Princess Polly. And then my faux leather white platform converse. Here is a better farther away shot, like super far away because I have my zoom lens on right now. everyone I'm back home I left the office around 5 so truly just had a nice little like 8 20 to 5 o'clock day typical work day but it actually felt so good because I'm so used to leaving the office and having to come back home and like still work because that's typically how it is in busy season and also a lot of times I'll usually leave the office like early anyways like around 3 so I am able to walk Ella but since Griffin had off today he was able to do that so I was able to just like have my full work day in the office so it's so nice to like not have to work when I come home but today was super productive in the office which was great um the office is either like extremely unproductive or it's super productive we were like mingling with the new interns that just started um so i'm a peer buddy for one of them so that's why i went in today besides like the times that i was with them and then like going to lunch um i got a lot done so that was good but we are making dinner now and then we just went ahead and like split up cutting up all the vegetables and stuff to make our meal prep because we didn't get to make it last night since we were um didn't get home till late because of father's day and everything so and i didn't want the meat to go bad i have had no energy to like meal prep but i was like look let's just like tag team this and then we won't waste any food so we're getting all the meal prep done after we eat but i'm starving so i'm trying to take care of dinner first but um i'm glad that we're taking care of it so we're not like wasting anything even though it didn't feel like it at all i'm honestly just gonna relax the rest of the night i do have I want to get some things together to submit for a brand that's not due until Friday, but it's really just Instagram content, so I can just like chill on the couch and do that. So that's like the only thing I'm going to do tonight besides read. I'm super excited because I got a package from Dibs, and I have a coupon code, you guys, Abby15 for 15% off. I've already opened, I filmed a little reel earlier, um, trying like, or swatching them to put, or not a reel, to put on my stories. But this is my favorite shade. It's the one I already have and like have basically used all of. Their products have this like really delicious cocoa butter, like vanilla type of smell. Um, this is the shade 1.5, but I really love 1.5 and 3. I can't remember if I have 1.5 or 3, but I think it's 1.5 that I have and love. So I love the little dual-ended sticks, and I always see Jenna Palak talk about the lip liners, so I'm super excited to try these. And I swatched this, and it was really hard for me to get off my arm when I swatched it earlier, so I love knowing that it will stay really well because a lot of lip liners just wear off so quickly. Thank you so much, Debs, and use Abby 15 for 15% off, and I'm probably gonna save a few of these to put in my bridesmaids' um, little boxes for the bachelorette trip because I'm kind of trying to just save a lot of the PR I get to give to them because I'm obviously not gonna go through all of these, um, so I'll probably just keep a shade of each and then save the rest for my gals. I got some products in the mail from Persona. I got a little lip liner. This is a really pretty color. It's like basically exactly what's on the end of the pencil, a brow gel, and then some bronzers and blushes. Look how pretty this blush is. That's like a dupe for the Dior blush that's super popular, but in a cream version. And then a bronzer, and then another little more natural blush, and a little brush. So thank you so much, Persona. Send me these 
worms and they're so good they're just like sour little gummy worms and they are way better than the smart sweets like sour gummies um in my opinion i absolutely love these <music> Nightcap minus the alcohol. I just ran into TJ Maxx. It's like 7.40. I was going to like try and look around at other things. I guess I'll just go ahead and tell y'all because otherwise showing y'all this will make no sense. But we finally got like a bed sleeping situation for our, our office slash guest room. It places two bedrooms and right now it just kind of serves as my office. We knew we wanted somewhere for people like guests to comfortably sleep without it having to be on the couch because that's typically what happens. Or we have like an air mattress. And I knew I wanted some sort of day bed situation because I know futons I feel like are just overpriced and not comfortable for what you're paying for. And then like any other size bed just wouldn't really fit in there because I actually have my bed frame from my room in college and that is at my parents house just like not being used so i was gonna use that but i was like there's no way that's gonna comfortably fit in a room with my work desk because the room's just too small for that and we have like this giant beanbag in our office now that y'all have seen and it's a king size or it can fold out to like a king size sleeping situation but it's like complicated kind of to get it that way and my it was my parents we didn't buy it or anything um and we didn't really want it we just kind of like needed something for temporary situation we'll probably either like give it back to my parents or try and sell it or something if they don't want it but i'm really excited because i actually got a brand deal with lol which is a mattress company and i had their mattresses like all through college so i'm super excited because i haven't worked with them since like i was in college but i think 2018 maybe and i'm really excited to like actually be working with them again so once they reached out i was like heck yes let's get these mattresses so i got really excited because i was like wow this will take care of a big expense and really the whole reason we were putting off not setting up the guest room because we just didn't want to pay for a bed or a mattress that's just like not priority right now with wedding expenses obviously but because of the gift cards i got through work i was able to get a day bed off of amazon that had good reviews without having to pay I think I maybe had to pay 20 bucks for it at the end of the day after the gift cards and I still have one left and I think I'm going to get it to either Amazon or Target and just order two sheet sets and then like throw a pillow or whatever for the bed but I just went to TJ Maxx and with my own money I got a little comforter duvet set this one was literally $35 so super cheap this is what the branding and everything of it looks like but it's super cheap and it comes with um, a pillow sham and the it's like an actual comforter not a duvet insert um or duvet cover you could put a duvet cover that on it though if you wanted and it comes with um a little square pillow too and this is actually the exact one that i have on my bed at home in florida that i've had on my bed for years i've gotten so many questions about that one um where it's from and it's from like tj maxx slash home goods so if you can find the brand dream stories there are comforter sets they're so soft and they hold up quality so well like they literally are just so so soft and so affordable so i just got that for once we get the bed set up and we were going to set the bed up tonight but griff and i both like just didn't really feel like it because i had a really busy day at work and he was also just really tired so i think our goal is to put that together tomorrow night so hopefully we can get that put together and show it to y'all tomorrow and i was gonna run in target too to look at their sheets in person but honestly i think the sheets i want i'm probably only gonna be able to get online i kind of want to do like a dainty floral sheet situation on the bed and trundle but we'll see we're definitely gonna have to rearrange the office though a little bit once we get the bed built because it's gonna be really tight with the ginormous beanbag bookshelf my desk and a bed i went to have 45 this morning at 6 30 which is a little bit earlier than i usually go and i'm probably gonna start going out that time just to get myself in the groove i actually might have to go earlier than that at the 5 30 class because during the fourth of first week of july like and on the fourth week of july on the fourth of july too unfortunately in the week after that I will be on my provision. I don't have the 4th of July off or that week off like I usually do because of a client I'm on having like deadlines that week basically. They're not in the US. And it's really hard for me when I'm on this provision to work out in the evenings because if something comes up, I need to be able to get to it pretty much immediately, which I have worked out in the evenings before in the past, but it's hard for me to do so without feeling stressed. So the best course of action is to just go in the morning before anything starts for the day but i have to start at 7 45 so going at 6 30 would be like pushing it because i only have like 15 minutes to walk ella get my stuff together and get started for the day and that's just like not enough time so i'll probably try and start going like 6 30 maybe 5 30 
um, here soon. But it was a great workout and I feel great. But I stayed up last night and I finished same time next summer and I just wrote the longest Goodreads book review I have ever left in my life. I will have to leave my Goodreads link down below, but so much of that book resonated with me. Getting over your first love part was obviously not something that I related to, but every, literally every other little thing I absolutely felt in the depths of my soul. I literally read the author's Q&A at the end and I never bothered to do that. And I just feel like that author gets me. I just feel like that author is me, basically. The way she articulates just pivotal moments and experiences that you go through as a young adult, it was just so emotion evoking. The imagery was crazy. I could literally feel the liberation of swimming and the water as a child and just letting the day go how it goes and just having no other worries than that present moment. Feel that just from the imagery in the book. Her descriptive language with just not feeling in touch with yourself and the whole journey back to your most authentic self and finding that version of yourself. That's kind of what a lot of the book was about. And the main character is basically this risk averse creative that has prioritized safety and chosen a life that basically aligns with safety so that she can have as many predictable outcomes as possible, which y'all know is me to a T. So I really, really resonated with that. And the fact that it was, you know, a beach setting and surfing was in it just felt so near and dear to me. And music was a big part of it as well. And you'll know music is just like another lang love language for me. If you like Zach Bryan, I kept thinking of the song Washington Lilacs as I was reading that book because the plot of the book just makes me think of that song, I guess. Seriously, the best summer romance I've ever read. And I fully understand that not everybody's going to be obsessed with it because it's not smut. It's much more of a young adult romance. I don't have to have smut in books to enjoy them. I know some people think that they're just boring if they don't have smut. But seriously, just so, so good. I can't wait to read Nora Goes Off Script, but I hadn't heard anybody talk about this book, so I wanted to share it with you all because it is very new, apparently. It's funny because when I started it like last weekend, I was like, I haven't heard anybody talk about this and I don't know why, so I'm kind of scared to read it. I saw that on my Instagram story and then I literally noticed last night when I finished it that it came out two weeks ago. So when I started it, it was basically like a week and a half old. That's why I haven't heard anybody talk about it yet. But um, seriously, so, so good. And I can't wait to read Nora Goes Off Script now. I just really enjoy the author's writing style too. And everybody has different preferences. I will say the back and forth with the past to present. I didn't understand having alternate point of views at some points throughout that, but I know that it serves a purpose and I can understand that purpose. And I actually think the author might have talked about it at the end of the book, I can't really remember. So I definitely recommend it. Five stars for me, I loved it, I resonated with it. I had so many highlights. Some of the highlights and quotes, I literally just, I put on my Instagram story, they're etched in my soul, they're not going away. So I love that book. I just spent all the free time of my morning that I was gonna spend starting another book, um, writing the review for that book, cause now it's 8.30 and I wanna log on the work, but I'm gonna go make my coffee really quick and then log on. I just met with my day of coordinator on my lunch break and another day of having to eat lunch at my desk because I just spent my lunch break on the call with my um, coordinator. But we went over my floor plan or our floor plan for the wedding. Um, we have three kind of like potential options. So we are going to decide on that tonight, hopefully so I can go ahead and order linens because that has been like haunting me and I know it's something I need to do ASAP. We're gonna decide on that tonight. If not tonight, then like by next week at the absolute latest. And then next week we're meeting for the timeline, which is going to be such a pain because personally, I don't wanna do a first look. I totally get and I understand and I actually do wish that I was doing a first look because of the logistics of everything with being able to get all the pictures taken care of more easily. There's such a feelings and emotional person and I just feel like that's going to be such a big moment and I would just rather not do a first look because I just feel like it takes away and I know a lot of people say it doesn't take away and it's totally sub subjective so if you did a first look and you loved it, then that's great. And I'm sure I would love a first look if I did it too, but personally, preference wise, I'd rather not do one. And if we're not doing one, then it just really messes up our whole timeline because I want to get married outside and with the sunset. And if we do that, we're going to be starting really early. And because of our wedding being on New Year's Eve, we're going later into the night. So that would just cause for a really, really long reception, which I'm not opposed to, but I just need to make sure that that will work. It's bedtime. Not actually. It's time to build the bed though. So it's kind of bedtime. On that one, flip it upside down. 
Yeah. And yeah, you want the hole at the top facing you. <laughs> <laughs> Griffin just told me I'm in jail, but from my perspective, you're in jail. Yeah, we're like trying to figure this out right now. This is my parents, by the way, and like I'm trying to get them to take it back because it was just like supposed to be temporary for us, but I don't know when or if they will be able to do that. I'm wanting to get the desk right here and the bed over here just so that like the flow of the space is better on this yeah. side. Okay. Cracking open a topo. Um, I need to get more of these because this is the last one. But we just ordered Kava Bob's for delivery, which we were not planning on getting food delivered. My hair looks so bad. But we've been building the bed at 7.30, so we need to eat, and we're both starving and hangry at this point. That bed is definitely not one you want to build by yourself, but it is affordable. And it's, like, not hard to put together. It's just some little things are finicky, like certain screws. You can only screw one of them in so much in order to get the other one in, that kind of thing. But I haven't had Cobble Bobs before, so I'm really excited to try it because Griffin always says it's really good. I got the mango, or not the mango, the fish tacos, um, and they look really good. And it's like actually warm, so love that. Okay, y'all, we did it. Um, I do like the bed on this wall. I'm glad we put it over here and not on this wall because it would have been like right in the way as soon as you walk in. The trundle rolls like really, really well. Um, so that's super exciting. I have the matches, but I'm not putting them on yet since I do have to do all the unboxing and stuff for a brand deal. My only concern is because of the bean bag right now, I'm just like so confused on where things need to go because like I don't love the mirror being right here at all still. And then the bookcase has like basically nowhere to go. I'm gonna try to put it on this wall right here in between the closet and the door, but I'm not gonna love it right there either, even if it does fit. Ideally, I'd scoot the bed down more, move the mirror to this side and then have the bookshelf i guess just next to my desk over here but the big bag's here so i can't do that but i'm so glad we got this belt it definitely took some trial and error with a few things but it's all good and sturdy now and i love the look of it it matches the desk and like the mirror and the black stuff really well um it looks really nice i had a day bag growing up so it's just like so funny having one again um but they are really great for smaller spaces for gas and everything, especially when you do have a trundle. But I will leave a link down below and I'm really excited to show y'all the sheets I got for it. I know y'all already saw the comforter. Okay, move some things around and this is how it is now until the bean bag is out. I'm gonna move those to being back above the desk. And actually don't think that looks too terrible in the corner over there. Ultimately, I don't love them being like right up next to each other. But once the bean bag is gone, I can put the mirror over there and then move the bed closer to that wall and then have the bookshelf over here or something like that. I don't really know yet. Um, let me know if y'all have any suggestions for the space. I'm trying to avoid putting anything up against the windows. Um, so obviously I have like the smallest piece of furniture possible up against the window. Friday. It's Thursday morning and it's about 8 30 and I'm hopping on to work. I went to F45 again this morning. I haven't been able to get a ton of clips for y'all this morning though because filming a brand deal related to like some hair product and stuff. So I was kind of like working with that while after I showered or whatever. But I just made my coffee and trying to like be really hydrated today. I feel really bloated today and I did like all yesterday. I don't really know why. I honestly think it's our meal prep lunch that's making me feel really bloated. Um, just something about the food is just like making me bloated. But the workout this morning was so tough. I'm like already sore. And this evening we're going to ex an exciting event that I'll be bringing all along with. I'll be fine, but at lunchtime, I really, I've worked through lunch the last two days, so I really need to not, which I technically didn't work through lunch yesterday because I had my meeting or whatever with my coordinator. I need to use my lunch break today to like put on my makeup for the event tonight and everything because we're gonna pretty much be leaving like probably right around like 5.15, so. We're about to head out to this um, Rockets Draft party event at Post here in Houston, which is kind of like downtown, so where my friend Savannah got engaged. It's actually, I'm pretty sure it was like the largest rooftop in the country, 
but I don't think we're on the rooftop for this event. So I, I'm wearing this jersey of Griffin's black Zara jeans and my faux leather white platform Converse. It's little Princess Polly, it's just like nylon purse. I don't really know if this is like more of a formal thing. I was torn between wearing like my skin dress and donks or this, but hopefully this isn't too casual, so we'll see. We are home from the draft party and I'm hanging up all my jeans right now because I couldn't decide which ones I wanted to wear right before we left. We left at like 5.30 and not only was the traffic bad, which that's one thing about Houston, I feel like in normal, like in big cities, traffic kind of just goes like opposite directions, but in Houston it's both directions all the time. What I mean by this is we were going like into downtown and you would think that going into downtown there wouldn't be like as much traffic maybe some but not as much no going into downtown in houston even at the end of a work day is so bad so i got stopped by a train just super thankful for the whole experience it was so fun and so cool and i love like it's just really cool getting two experiences with one brand because i just like building the relationship and seeing the same person there and everything as a contact from the brand. We were so shocked at the amount of people that went to this because it's basically just, you know, a live stream of the draft. In the VIP area, which was a lot less congested, thankfully, and the food was incredible. We didn't eat a lot just because we could only really like get one plate, but we still ate and it was good food and the drinks were good. But the coolest thing is we got to take a picture with Gerald Green and it was so funny because we were kind of leaning over where the stair was to go up in the VIP area. And I wasn't paying attention, but Griffin was just kind of like looking at someone coming up the stairs and I was like, what? And he was just like, oh, that guy played for the Rockets. And I said, who? And I turned around and I saw him and I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, he does look familiar. And, and Griffin was like, oh, his last name is Green, but I just totally blanked on his first name. And I just looked at Griffin and I was like, is that Gerald Green? And I don't know every single Rockets player. I have, I did not grow up a Rockets fan. I didn't grow up really watching the NBA because I'm from Northwest Florida and there are no professional sports teams basically in Northwest Florida. So I didn't have a connection to anything growing up. I didn't really start watching the NBA until like my freshman year of college, sophomore year of college, especially when I started dating Griffin because he always watched Rockets games together. So I knew who Gerald Green was. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is actually so iconic because I actually know who it is. And I can't say that with any any Rockets player but I feel like the Rockets team from 2017 to like this year I know most of the players I feel like I don't know if I could necessarily point any of them out anywhere anyways he passed us and then we were about to leave and he was kind of like right diagonal behind us and he was just kind of standing there and I was like Griffin let's go ask him to take a picture and I said you're gonna regret it if you don't because I have had too many instances where I have been in the presence of an athlete that I love and I have not taking a picture with them because I've just chickened out and I regret it. When you're in college, I was walking on a Bryant dining hall in Alabama and Jalen Hurts and I like walked down steps like this, like basically across from each other. It was both of our freshman year and I have been obsessed with Jalen Hurts since the beginning. He's been my like Alabama quarterback, my favorite. But I was on my way to a macroeconomics exam and I was in a hurry and I needed to catch this bus in order to get to the exam. I was already running late and if I missed the bus then I wouldn't have had enough time to really take my test. Instead of stopping and just taking a quick selfie or something really quick, I was just stunned and I just ran to the bus and I I just wish I would have taken a picture of that. I walked by Bo Scarborough once in college and actually tutored one of Najee Harris's best friends for two years in econ. So when I had gone out, I had ran into that guy I tutored and he would be with Najee sometimes. I have just missed so many chances that I was like, I'm not missing this one, especially because I have you with me to make it less awkward. And it was just so funny because for like five minutes, he was like, I'm not doing it. I was like, we are doing it. So I had to get us to muster up the courage. And he was so sweet. Picture with him and he dab Griffin up and he shook my hand. It was so sweet. Anyways, launch feel over. It is like 10 o'clock. Um, we actually got home a while ago, but I've been editing a real TikTok on my phone and I'm going to go ahead and take my makeup off and go to bed. And I think instead of going to an F45 workout in the morning, I'm going to go at lunch tomorrow because I just don't want to get up early tomorrow. It's Friday. There's no reason to. <laughs> Just 
got home from F45. It was so top today. Thankfully, that's the last time I have to do this outfit or do this outfit, do this workout until they cycle through this workout and bring it back another month. It's just like really intense um, cardio, I feel like. But I'm going to walk out, make a protein smoothie, and then get right back to work. Next week is the last week before everyone goes, you know, out of office basically for the summer break when my whole firm like shuts down. But like I mentioned earlier, I have to work that whole week. But everybody's like trying to finish everything before like next week. So it's like today, I feel like everyone's trying to get things passed up for review so that they can be reviewed next week. It's all crazy and I'm just like, okay, I'd rather not burn out right before my provision, trying to finish everything else right before the provision. But everybody else views it as, oh, I wanna finish everything before vacation, which I totally understand. Cause if I was going on vacation, I'd want my to-do queue be completely empty too. I wear this little free people movement um, sports bra. I got it from Pavement here in Houston, which is like basically a Buffalo Exchange kind of, um, just a consignment store. But they had a ton of these there for like 12 bucks. And I got it a while ago when Griffin and I went to try and thrift some outfits for Gulf Coast Jam. And then these TNA Butter Purple Bike Shorts and then TNA Socks, my Ultra Boost, but let's go walk Ella and then get back to work. And I'm hoping we don't really have any plans tonight because I kind of just want to get started on cleaning so that we don't have a lot to do with the rest of this weekend. Just finished up dinner and it's like seven o'clock and I'm hopping back on my computer really quick because I forgot to submit my timesheet because I was just so starving because I didn't end up eating lunch. I just had my protein shake after working out and then I pretty much um, was working nonstop from there. I got off around like 5.45 and made dinner, ate dinner, and then I was like, oh my gosh, I need to submit my timesheet, which if you don't know anything about public accounting, or really it's honestly a lot of clients serving industries probably do this. I know like lawyers typically do as well. We have to basically charge our time to our clients. So it's like we felt timesheets for the week. We have to charge eight hours of time a day. And it's honestly one of the most annoying and stressful parts about my job because it's really easy, especially when you're busy to just like lose track of it. There's apps and stuff that you can do that can track it and everything. I honestly don't use one. I'm usually pretty good about logging it, but I have not been the best about submitting them on time. You can only get so many in a year. And there's been a few times where I like worked late and then I like got back on and submitted it later, but it ended up still counting as a missed timesheet because it was late. But yeah, it's really super annoying and stressful. And it's just like something that adds to the stress with the job. It affects your promotion. It affects your performance-based bonus. Bonus, um, because the hours you charge basically all factors into something called the utilization which is basically how many hours out of your 40 hours a week you're charging to clients so it's just like another thing to stress about but that's the life of public accounting i would like to go ahead and record the podcast or edit tonight but the last thing i want to do is just sit in front of my computer because that's what i've been doing all day so I think instead I'm just gonna work on getting some cleaning started, laundry started. And I feel like we have so much stuff in random spots where it doesn't belong. And I've gotten a lot of PR recently, which I'm really thankful for, but I need to just sort through things. I've been saving a lot of it for my bridesmaids. I feel like there's just so much random stuff everywhere and that makes it overwhelming to pick up because it's not like I'm just cleaning. It's like first, I'm probably gonna need to spend about an hour picking up all of my random stuff everywhere and then I can start cleaning. I just got this huge package in from Liquid IV because they have sugar-free Liquid IV now, but their packages are always so crazy. They literally just talk to me, <laughs> but I am so excited to try these. This one sounds so good. I love peach anything. I'm in lime and green grape. Oh my gosh, that sounds good. Wait, this is all so fun. I think this is a little speaker. Oh my gosh. I'm definitely going to save these and take them on my bachelorette trip. I'm trying to like stock up on liquid IV before then because I know we're going to want some. Got some scratch and sniff stickers. So fun. And I have my code always down below for y'all to save 25% off and get free shipping. Mark, I know you There's too many people where I'm like, what's going on here? Except I know three people per day. People, because that is what's the most really. Okay, tonight's been pretty productive. I just finished up cleaning the kitchen 
and I literally hate cleaning the kitchen, but it feels good to have it done. It's just like always such a process because you always think you're almost done and then you're like, there's so much left to do. Um, Griffin's gonna finish cleaning tomorrow though. I just did like the bathrooms except for the showers and decluttered things like our dresser, the top of our dresser has been covered in stuff for the last like month and a half, honestly, just accumulating random things like hats and t-shirts and accessories and hair clips, just random stuff like that. So I cleaned that off so that looks nice now and I actually decluttered in my bathroom which I was not planning on doing tonight. I was definitely just trying to get as much cleaning done as possible but I just tend to get very overwhelmed by my environment and something, something that I'm going to be trying to implement going forward in the near future is working on more of a daily cleaning schedule. I am an all or nothing person especially when it comes to cleaning so I tend to not put any effort into cleaning unless I have time to like get a lot done if not everything so I'll have like a marathon cleaning day over the weekend but I hate doing that because then it takes up you know a good four hours of your weekend so and that's with Griff and I both cleaning together it's like four hours it's longer if it's just me and I just feel like it'd be much more sustainable if we did a little bit throughout the week each day or maybe not every day but like every other day I just know that I'm somebody that's gonna have to have it on like the fridge to remind me to do it though i went through like my skincare drawer because i have a drawer that has sort of my overflow of products either backups that i've bought or pr that i've been sent that i want to try that's all in one drawer and then i have another drawer that's my actual daily skincare products that are in use so i organized that drawer i went through it because i had some things that were like basically empty that i just hadn't thrown away so i threw out all the empty stuff and got rid of things that i just wasn't using it's all nice and organized now i tried to take some things to buffalo exchange a couple weekends ago and they didn't take like anything they literally took four items and I took four ginormous bags in and I just went through those clothes too and I picked out what I'm gonna put on Poshmark so like the stuff that I haven't been sent for free things that I've like actually bought and everything it's gonna go on Poshmark so I'm gonna try to take, get, get pictures of that stuff this weekend and post it but then I set some stuff aside for my friend Julia because she's coming to visit in like a month which I'm so excited for and I told her she could like look through it before I put it on Poshmark so I had a good amount of cleaning done which feels really really good and I actually got my podcast plan but it was pretty simple it didn't take too long it was like a 30 45 minute process tonight because i am basically doing a mid-year reset episode um this weekend is what i'm recording but i actually like wrote out in my journal sort of how i'm resetting for the next year and that's kind of the podcast plan instead of it being a traditional podcast plan so that'll be fun and i'm glad that's out of the way too because now i'll just have to record it tomorrow i'm gonna shower and switch over the laundry and then i need to do a few things on my computer for wedding stuff and for some youtube stuff it's like 10 o'clock right now I'll, have, I'll start a weekend vlog this weekend but thank you all so much for watching this week's vlog i hope you all enjoyed it and be sure to subscribe if you aren't already and turn on post notifications so you don't miss an upload check out my podcast and bloom podcast available everywhere you listen and follow me on my social media link down below if i didn't already say that so you can keep up with me in real time give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i will see you all in my next video thanks so much for watching